Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. As of the filming of this video, we've just hit 500 subscribers. If you're one of them, thank you very much. And if you're not, you may want to consider it. There's lots more interesting stuff to come. If you watched our last video, you will have seen that I was working on some welding repairs in the floor. And in order to do that, I actually had to remove the vacuum tank. Now, that process didn't go quite as I had expected. So, here you go. Here's what I learned. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Now the vacuum tank is located under the left hand side floorboard of the vehicle. So if you're in North America, the driver's side floor. Again, this is a 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso Cantor. We start by removing the forward nut. Now the bolt for this is actually spot welded to the floor, so you just need to remove the nut on the bottom. Unfortunately, I had to drill this out as the nut was completely corroded in place and of course, I didn't get it on camera. While you're under there, remember to unplug the vacuum tank sensor wire as well. Next, we need to disconnect the vacuum lines. There are two. There's also one bolt holding them in place. There are no clamps holding the hoses in place, so you just have to pull hard and they will pop off. Be careful as the steel lines can bend and kink. If they don't kink, you can straighten them back out again, but maybe we should take that bolt out first. Now that the lines are free, we have one nut and one bolt to undo in the wheel well, and then everything is in free fall. Now that we have the tank and the lines removed, we can see the toll that the rust has taken. And in fact, right here, this connection is pretty much shot. So this tank will not be able to hold any vacuum and things won't work properly. So now that we've removed the old tank, I'm gonna do some treatment to the new tank before I install it. The paint that comes on these tanks is not the highest of quality. It is very thin. So I'm gonna put a coating of rubber on the outside. What I'm gonna use here is the same product that I use to do all the seam sealing when I'm repairing the floors. Here's a picture of it. And I'm basically gonna do a really light scuff sanding of the entire surface of the tank. And then I'm gonna coat the whole thing, leave it for a day or two before I go ahead and install it back in place. What I'm using to sand this is a sanding sponge and it's probably something around 100 to 150 grit. You can see how easily some of the paint comes off. I'm not really concerned with getting a perfect sanding, just kind of get an overall scuff on the outer surface. In total, I spent just under four minutes sanding so it's not a huge amount of time. Next is a quick wipe down with isopropyl alcohol to get the tank nice and clean. Now let me stress, you want good, thick gloves for this next step. If you use cheap gloves and they rip, you're going to end up with this goop all over your hands and it does not come off easily. Use the tip of your caulking gun to get into any deep crevices and just start squirting all over the flats. Try to keep your caulking gun hand free from touching any sticky part of the tank. Now we're going to spread this like finger paint. You'll find that this stuff spreads like peanut butter at minus 40. It's really thick. Make sure you concentrate on any areas where there are joints between two pieces. We really want to prevent moisture from getting into these spots. Make sure you get an even coating over the entire surface of the tank, but don't worry, you can always touch up missed spots later. Good gloves, nothing on my hand. Now 
Now we want to fit the vacuum lines back onto the tank. I'm just doing a temporary install, uh, so I have not yet treated the rust on these lines. However, this will all be coming back out again later. I just need to be able to have this in so that I can move the truck. Now I noticed that the new tank doesn't have any barbs for the hoses, so I think I'll be installing some hose clamps on these lines. Now the last thing we want to make sure of before we reinstall this is the area around where the forward mounting nut goes. We want a good clean surface of bare metal. Uh, we want this because this is going to be the ground point where the tank pressure sensor gets its ground. With the cab tipped up and the fasteners within reach, pop the lower stud through the mounting hole and spin on the nut. Next, insert the bolt, but keep everything loose until all fasteners are back in place. The hoses can be a bit of a bugger to get back on, but be patient and you'll get it. This one can be especially difficult because you can only use one hand. Now for me, I'll temporarily insert this nut in place. Once my bodywork is done, this will be spot welded to the floor. So for you, just install the nut on the underside of this stud. Finally, don't forget to reconnect the wire on the sensor, tighten up all four mounting fasteners, and you're done. So here's my advice to you. Do yourself a favor. If you live anywhere where there's rust forming on your truck, check out your vacuum tank. There's four bolts to take it out. It's not very expensive. Here's the part number again. Here's the product that I used to coat it. You're looking at maybe five minutes to take it out. You're looking at maybe five minutes to sand it and maybe 20 minutes to prep it with the rubber coating. Thank you for watching. I hope that helped. Throw a comment down below. Give us a like. Hit subscribe if you like this kind of thing. There's plenty more coming. Thanks for watching. Bye.